Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. One of the things I've gone over on this channel many times is that I find cloud security cameras to be a scam in many ways. Whether you have stuff like Vava and Sun Valley Tech disabling cameras after the sale so that you kind of have to buy a new one, or you have companies like Arlo that promise you certain storage on the side of the box and then just stop giving it to you until you, unless you give them more money, or companies like Wise that somehow turns an AWS outage into allowing thousands of people's cameras to be viewed by other people. I do not want cloud-connected security cameras. What I like are security cameras that connect to a local NVR that is in my closet with hard drives in it, and, like, that's it. The whole idea there is I don't have to risk my data being accessed by anybody else because I have the choice to not connect it to the Internet. I have the ability to not pay once for my system and never pay again. I don't have to worry about a monthly charge or a monthly fee that goes up. Or you telling me, hey, sorry, the camera setup you paid $800 for no longer works. you got to buy all new cameras because we're not supporting this anymore. And, you know, often they'll, they'll claim it's features and security and other crap, which is mostly bullshit. I have my setup in my closet, and as long as my hard drives run, I'm good. One of the problems that you run into nowadays is that a lot of modern cameras won't even allow you to connect to your own system. It used to be that your camera used to have an RTSP stream or some sort of OnViv setup, and you could configure your local NVR or DVR to connect to that particular camera, whatever NVR you want. You could use any NVR or DVR with almost any IP camera. Then they had cloud features, which was a cool add-on to what they already had. The problem is that a lot of companies started taking away your ability to connect using a local server, similar to what Wise did here. My favorite comment in this video was Wise pulled the firmware that allows their cameras to connect to third-party servers right before they had this, this massive data breach again. How you turn an AWS outage into other people can view other people's cameras is beyond me. One of the many reasons I don't connect my cameras to the internet and I use good software like Freegate that, again, doesn't go online. If I wanted to view online, I could set up Wireshark or OpenVPN, but if I didn't want to go online, don't have to do any of that. So the problem here is that we're combining a forced cloud usage with many cameras with forced arbitration. And this is something that's coming from TP-Link over here with their Tapo cameras. This was from a user that screenshotted this. We've updated our privacy policy in terms of use. A lot of the stuff here is normal, like the application is not going to be 24-7, 100% reliable because, again, this is a freaking $20 camera. You, uh, and, you know, like yeah, you get what you pay for there. Uh, they, they have the right to issue up updates, bug fixes, all that type of stuff. What re really gets into it is here. Again, arbitration. And I don't have to read this entire thing out loud. I'm guessing you can imagine what is in here already. Uh, pretty much you are forced to go through arbitration rather than being able to have a class action. Now, why is this important when it comes to a security camera? Two reasons. A, while TP-Link admittedly is allowing you to use this locally, many cameras do not have an option for you to use an OnViv or RTSP-based NVR locally. You have to use their cloud system. You get their cloud system or nothing else. B, there are data breaches within these cloud systems because they are run by fucking clowns. C, if you allow my cameras to be viewed by other people, along with tens of thousands of other people's cameras, we should be able to sue you for negligence and be compensated for that because you fucked up. And if you don't want that to happen, maybe you could allow your cameras to work with our own fucking NVRs so that we don't have to pay you every single month. See, when you release a camera that forces and twists people's arm into paying every single month rather than allow them the freedom to use an NVR or DVR of their choice, it is really aggravating when you also then want to, to do forced arbitration. And again, yes, TP-Link will allow you to use an NVR or DVR of your choice right now. You can do that. If we're seeing stuff like this happen with socks, do you think that this is not going to be copied and pasted to every single cloud camera provider that does not allow you to use a local NVR? If tens of thousands of people's personal data in the form of video, we're talking about camera footage from private areas that you may not want to share with the world, is revealed to the world, you may want to hold that company accountable for the negligent setup of their system that led to that data breach especially when they're forcing you to use their systems. Now, again, while TP-Link currently is not forcing you to use their systems, you've seen how this forced arbitration thing is done by one company in a field and then copied and pasted to every other company in a field when their products continue to sell. I wouldn't be surprised if this agreement is copied and pasted to every single camera manufacturer that forces you to use their own cloud-hosted solutions if you want to access your cameras. Uh, and, and that's unfortunate. And this is something that I think should be pushed back against. I am not going to buy a TP-Link camera if they're going to have a forced arbitration agreement. Because 
because if I use their cloud services and you screw something up with your cloud services because you have a first year intern that doesn't know what a default gateway is, set up your network, uh, that, that my personal data is just out there for anybody to see. I do believe that you should be held accountable. You should be held responsible and we should be able to take you to a court of law to do so via the vehicle of a class action lawsuit. And at the very least to be able to get a refund for the camera that uh, negligently allowed my personal data to be revealed to everyone. That's about that. Again, just like every, again, to be clear, I, I would like nothing more than to never make a video on this topic again. I would like my last video on this topic to be forced arbitration is illegal in the United States. Like, again, you know, I, I'm reading this history book because I started taking this, this class, the history class recently. It's very interesting because it was talks about in the, the mid 1600s around Virginia, Maryland and the colonies. If you bought 6,000 acres of land, then you got the ability to establish your own courts. And um, these companies don't even have to purchase 6,000 acres of land anymore to establish their own courts and force you to use them. It's a fucking joke. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video especially if you use the wise camera. I will literally see you in the next video while you're on the toilet. Nah, I'm fucking with you. See you in the next one. Bye now.